Thank you, Sister Annie. <clears throat> this is the ninth <clears throat> sermon in the series on the fall of Babylon. <clears throat> and based on our text today that Sister Annie just read, <clears throat> this, uh, I've entitled this sermon, Babylon is Fallen, is Fallen. I admit that I've struggled with exactly where to go with this announcement because it's so full of good things. There's <clears throat> scarcely has so much been packed into three words as Babylon is fallen. There's a lot happening here, and that's because for approximately the last two and a half millennia, there have been things that have happened that caused this phrase to have a lot of meaning. <clears throat> There's a lot of experience of the people of God packed in here, especially in approximately the last 2,000 years, in particular, Babylon has been one of the utilities of Satan, <clears throat> which he has used to thwart the purpose of God. So when we hear Babylon the great is fallen, we know then that this is a weighty message. <clears throat> the strategy behind Babylon is to thwart God's purpose by robbing him of his elect. <clears throat> Babylon was formed by Satan to deceive the people of God and to rob Christ of his people and of his inheritance. <clears throat> if Babylon is triumphant, then God will not have his temple. Uh -huh. And there will be no place for God to dwell in eternity to come. And if Satan is successful and Babylon is triumphant, then Christ will have no bride and no offspring. There will be no inheritance for him or for the men that he gave himself to redeem. This is why those who were delivered from ancient Babylon set themselves to build up Zion. <clears throat> Zerubbabel and Joshua the priests set themselves to the rebuilding of the temple, and Nehemiah and Ezra, Nehemiah gave himself to rebuilding the wall, and he and Ezra gave themselves to reestablishing the, the law of God among the people, and particularly the law as it regarded the temple. They labored intensively to, to restore the, the work of the temple, the priesthood, the, the contributions to the priests so that the priests could fulfill their ministry because this was the ministry to God. They, these men understood what had happened when they went captive to Babylon. The city of God and the temple of God had been left desolate. The service to God had ceased. They recognized this. So when, when they were freed from Babylon, this was their main labor was in Zion. In the temple, reestablishing this ministry to God. <clears throat> a present Babylon is a great city that runs on the spiritual machinations of the devil, or the beast as he is represented in Revelation. <clears throat> in Babylon, all the city's works, all of its employees, all of its businesses, its government, its markets, its neighborhoods are all designed to deceive and ensnare and take captive the people of God <clears throat> to enslave them. Therefore, now a lot has happened in Babylon that has caused the saints to watch for this announcement. Babylon is fallen. <clears throat> our experiences and our dealings with Babylon have given us reason to hope for the voice of this angel, signaling the demise of that city that is the enemy of our soul and that we hate so much. We were nearly starved to death in Babylon. Amen. We heard the name of our God blasphemed there. We were not treated well there. Some of our brethren, in fact, were killed in Babylon. The word of God was either perverted or withheld in Babylon. We feel as though we were robbed of precious time and heavenly progress in Babylon. If we had not been held captive by her, we would have seen the truth earlier and grown and advanced more rapidly. We feel as though we could have been used of God for much better things, but we were distracted by Babylon for too long a time. So there's a lot of pain and regret among the people of God and on many different levels because of Babylon. And Babylon had this effect upon us because of our belief in and our faith in Jesus Christ. We were targeted by great Babylon because of our association with God. So we rejoice to hear these words then that Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. Now this is not an announcement that this angel just made into the air. <clears throat> 
take note of the text here. This is not a vain voice. This angel's not speaking to himself. <clears throat> take note that the angel comes down from heaven to earth and his glory lightens the whole world. <clears throat> And then he proclaims this good word. So this is to be seen and heard by the saints. This is a proclamation for the people of God. And we love to hear it. Yeah. And we long to see it with great anticipation. Yeah. This is a declaration that deals with things that are very personal for us. What does this proclamation mean to the saints? The one that held you captive for so long is fallen. Your persecutor is fallen. The great city that separated you from your brethren is fallen. The harlot that corrupted the precious things of our God is fallen. The city that spurned your preaching of the gospel is fallen. The great whore who shed the blood of the saints is fallen. That city that cast out your names as evil is fallen. That mother of abominations that misrepresented our God is fallen. The wicked city that sought to exalt herself above our Lord and above his Christ is fallen. Because we know our God, now we know, we knew that Babylon could not succeed. We knew that this had to happen. We knew that in due time she would fall. So it's good to hear this heavenly spokesman cry this out with a loud and a strong voice. Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. <clears throat> So then this is too great a matter to be proclaimed by the voice of a man. What John wrote and what we preach are just faint echoes of what this angel said. It's necessary that one with great glory and power and might and strength say these words so that they can be reverberated throughout all the ages of time. Because this is one of the great epochs on God's calendar. <clears throat> like the lengthy years and the spiritual darkness that preceded the birth of Christ in this world. <clears throat> we live in spiritually dark and wicked times. God has hidden himself from the churches because of their rejection of him. Can you imagine being one of those shepherds watching over their flocks by night? It's nice and quiet, keeping the sheep sleeping, and suddenly an angel appears and tells them that the Savior is born. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. What a sight that must have been. This a whole multitude of the heavenly host piercing through the night and the darkness to make such a marvelous announcement to men. And so it is with this announcement. For the time being... In our text in Revelation, this is a prophecy concerning things to come. But the time of this glorious epoch is now drawing close when the glory of God is going to pierce the darkness that has covered this earth again. This angel that John saw in his vision is going to come down from heaven with great power and he's going to light up this earth with his glory and the glory of God is going to burst on the earth again. And he won't be coming just to make a show. He won't be coming to make another prophecy. This is a mighty angel, and he comes to cry out the declaration of another work of God, another great epoch. Yes, He's going to cry out with a strong voice for all of heaven and earth to hear, Babylon the great is fallen. Mm -hmm. It is over. Yeah. She is washed up, and the time of her judgment has come. Yeah. Now, only this angel has a voice to say that <clears throat> properly. Yeah. Now, I like to say it, too but I can't say it like he's going to say it. Now he says, Babylon the great, not great in goodness, not great in benefit, not great in holiness or righteousness. <clears throat> These words, Babylon the great, signify the effects of the city. It's a very expansive city. One of Satan's greatest projects is the city of Babylon. It's great in population, it's great in wickedness, great in influence, great in sin against God. Babylon appears to be such a great city that the world has not even considered that it could possibly fall. How could a religious spirit that dominates the entire world fall? Who could overthrow it even if they wanted to? Who could make a successful play against great Babylon? She has deceived all nations. Kings have committed fornication with her. 
The great merchants of the earth have gotten their wealth through her. One might think that the mere size of Babylon precludes the possibility of her falling. But here we have the announcement of God given to the saints. And actually, this announcement was made a very long time ago. Babylon only appears great for the present time. And when it falls, <clears throat> it will do so in just one hour. Amen. Amen. It's going to be a great fall. Since Babylon is great, that means her fall will be great. And there is a lot of falling associated with Babylon. That's because what she has done is against God, and therefore it was destined to fail from the very beginning of it. It's like the house that was built on the sand. doesn't matter how much money was put into the house. It doesn't matter how important the people are that lives in the house, or how many people are in the house, or how it's well decorated, or what purposes they use the house for, none of this matters. It was built on sand. Right. Well, this is how Babylon is also. <clears throat> Babylon being given its power of Satan is the same as the house built on the sand. It will not prevail against God. Its greatness means that it will just have a great fall. <clears throat> the greatness of her falls foretold in the word here in Revelation chapter 18. There's some key words. Verse 7 says, much torment and sorrow give her. It's associated with her greatness, much torment. Verse 8, therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death, mourning, and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. Amen. Verse 10, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour thy judgment is come. Again, verse 17, for in one hour so great riches has come to naught. Yeah. Verse 19, they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour she is made desolate. Mm, Kings shipmasters, sailors, all who do their business by the sea, merchants all over the world bewail her because she was great Babylon. The effects of the fall of Babylon will be very great, felt all over the world. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> but for the people of God, these will be good effects. Mm -hmm. One of the things that the fall of Babylon will bring about is the prevalence and success of the word of God. The success of the gospel. I take it that that's what this means. Is the earth being lightened by the glory of this angel. Meaning the darkness is going to be dispelled. And light's going to shine on the earth. And the word's going to have success again. The word that's been kept in darkness because of great Babylon. <clears throat> A world that is presently covered in a Babylonish spirit. Is going to be lightened with the glory of this proclaiming angel. In fact... There's more hints to this in Revelation chapter 14, beginning at verse 6. <clears throat> I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel. So this is the everlasting gospels entrusted to this angel. To preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and every kindred, kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him. For the hour of his judgment is come. He's about to do something. This is, this is the angel with the gospel now making this announcement. God's about to do something. And worship him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. And there followed him another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. That great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. So here these two are associated together. One angel, he's... He's preparing, he's got the everlasting gospel to give, and right behind him is the second angel saying, now's the time. Babylon's, he's going to make the way for this angel with the gospel. Amen. The great fall of great Babylon is going to be the great rising of great Zion, the city of the great king. It'll be like Isaiah 60, verses 1 and 2 again. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Amen. And this wonderful word 
from the prophet Habakkuk. <clears throat> For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Amen. So part of the great the fall of great Babylon is that she will not get to keep the things that she has plundered. <clears throat> and she has plundered them. Babylon doesn't earn anything. She just takes everything. When she falls, the world is not going to remain in the darkness that she has made. It's like when ancient Babylon fell. You recall Nebuchadnezzar had taken a lot of things from the temple of God, things of gold and silver. <clears throat> and these things were actually preserved during the captivity. They weren't lost. And when, King, when the Lord rose up King Cyrus, those things were returned to the temple, weren't they? <clears throat> also Cyrus the king brought forth the vessels of the house of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar had brought forth out of Jerusalem and had put them in the house of his gods. Even those did Cyrus king of Persia bring forth by the hand of Mithradath the treasurer and numbered them unto Sheshbazar the prince of Judah. And this is the number of them. Now I... I wondered if I should read this whole text as four or five verses here, but I, I chose to read this because I want you to see where there's precise items. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. There's specific, particular things that were taken, and those particular things have been preserved, and they're going to be returned. Amen. This is the number of them. 30 chargers of gold, 1,000 chargers of silver, 9 and 20 knives. They even counted the knives. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing of this is going to be lost now. Yeah. 30 basins of gold, silver basins of a second sort, 410, and other vessels, 1,000. All the vessels of gold and silver were 5,400. All these did Sheshbazar bring up with them of the captivity that were brought up from Babylon unto Jerusalem. Now these are like the precious things of God. <clears throat> Particular truth, certain passages of scripture that have been kept hidden because of Babylon such as the Lord's table and baptism that were taken and perverted or hidden. But God has preserved them, and when Babylon falls, they will be returned to their proper places, meaning that light will be shed on them once again. These things will not die with Babylon. She will not get to keep any of her possessions. She stole them from God's people. Her cities are a desolation, a dry land in a wilderness, a land wherein no man dwelleth, neither doth any son of man pass thereby. And I will punish Bel, that's B-E-L, in Babylon, and I will bring forth out of his mouth that which he hath swallowed up, and all the nations shall not flow together any more unto him, yea, the wall of Babylon shall fall. Now you know that Bel... Again, not, not Baal, but Bel was one of the primary gods of the Babylonians. <clears throat> and here in this text, the Lord speaks of Bel as if it swallowed up the nations. When, when Babylon became a prominent empire in the world, it's like the nations were, their culture was absorbed into Babylonian culture. And this god Bel just swallowed up all the nations. Well, when they fall, everything that they had is going to be vomited back out. They're not going to get to keep it. <clears throat> She will not get to keep the riches she has accumulated, and she will not get to keep her captives. Since Babylon belongs to, sh to Satan, she is like him. She never gives, she only takes. This is a part of the devilish self-exaltation process. You only take in. You never give or benefit others. You just take and take and take to build yourself up as high or higher than God. <clears throat> Babylon is only interested in gathering for herself and building herself above God. But when everything that she has gathered will be given up when she is judged. Now the point that I'm saying here is not that everyone that was taken captive in Babylon is going to be saved. That's not what is meant by Bel, everything that he had swallowed flowing out of his mouth. <clears throat> The Lord is saying that what was taken captive by Babylon and what was given and sold to Babylon by her merchants, what was intended to increase that city and lend to its operation and exaltation will have to be given up. None of the things that were contained in Babylon will be kept by her. When she falls, she will be spoiled as she spoiled others. She will be made desolate as she made others desolate. Jeremiah 51:53. Though Babylon should mount up to heaven, though she should fortify the height of her strength, 
Yet from me spoilers will come to her, saith the Lord. Amen. In the kingdom of God, the one who wins is victoriously, they win everything. And those who are lost get nothing. <clears throat> That's the way it works. This is the difference between eternal life and condemnation. If you have life, the Lord himself is your inheritance. Mm -hmm. All things are yours. Well, now, if you don't have life, mm -hmm. there isn't anything left for you to have because it's all being given to the saints. Amen. So Babylon's not, the point I'm making here is Babylon's not going to keep these things. When she falls, there's a lot of light going to be shed yeah. on the things that she took for herself. <clears throat> Good things I'm talking about. Now, this text is actually part of a warning given to the people of God in Revelation 18, verses 1 and 2. And we know this to be true because the verses to follow in verse 4, another voice is heard in heaven saying, come out of her, my people. So the proclamation that Babylon the great is fallen comes before the voice that says, come out of her, my people. Now, however, this should not be misconstrued to mean that after Babylon falls, there will be opportunity to come out. That's, that's not what the Lord is presenting before us here. <clears throat> it should be obvious from the description of Babylon's judgment that there's no opportunity to come out because she'll be made desolate. She'll be destroyed completely. <clears throat> Every one of these personalities mentioned in Revelation 18 who bewail and mourn for the loss of Babylon, take note, they're all standing afar off. Verse 10, the kings of the earth stand afar off. Verse 15, the merchants stand afar off. Verse 17, every shipmaster in the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off. Why are they standing afar off? Because at this point, there isn't anyone coming out of there and surviving in Babylon is out of the question. A mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. This is verses 21 through 23. And the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. And no craftsman, or whatsoever craft he be, shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth. For by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. So the picture here is of complete decimation. Completely desolate. There's, again, the point is knowing no one is coming out of this. Going back to what I said a few seconds ago, the point of the, this is a warning. This is a warning before she falls. And the, the angel makes this announcement, Babylon is fallen. It's a warning. <clears throat> no one's going to come out of that. <clears throat> In John's vision, the proclamation, Babylon is fallen, is heard before the call to come out of her to show us how certain a thing the fall of Babylon is. <clears throat> So the words are spoken in a way to minister to saints of all ages, <clears throat> throughout the ages, I should say. <clears throat> Babylon is fallen. So if you're ever tempted to go back to Babylon <clears throat> for any reason, you should take these words to heart. Babylon is fallen. Amen. Is fallen. Do not think Babylon is going to fall, but not as long as I'm there. Think Babylon is fallen. <clears throat> Don't think I will stay there and help as long as I can. Yeah. Think Babylon is fallen. Mm -hmm. Do not think that Babylon will continue and to, to have success and will go on for a long time deceiving and practicing. <laughs> think Babylon is fallen. Mm -hmm. Her feet are set in slippery places. Yeah. Yeah. Now this is not a new thing that the Lord does, declaring the end from the beginning. <clears throat> this is what he's doing. Long before Nebuchadnezzar was born and long before Babylon came to prominence in the world, the prophet Isaiah announced this <clears throat> back in Isaiah 21, verse 9. And behold, here cometh a chariot of men with a couple of horsemen. And he answered and said, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, and all the graven images of her gods hath he broken to the ground. <clears throat> 
How again, even <clears throat> before ancient Babylon rose to prominence, the word Isaiah said the exact same thing. Actually, this angel's quoting Isaiah. <clears throat> Not Babylon will fall. Even Isaiah said Babylon is fallen before Nebuchadnezzar was even born. Probably before his parents were even born. Babylon is fallen. So the angel in John's vision is actually quoting from Isaiah. How would you like to have an angel quote what the Lord gave you to say? Maybe they do. I don't know. <clears throat> did here. At the time that Isaiah spoke this, now the reaction of the people who heard this might have been, well, Babylon? Who cares about Babylon? Who's Babylon? Who cares if Babylon falls? But now if they had Isaiah's words some centuries later when they were captive in Babylon, they would like to hear Babylon is fallen. They would like to hear it just like we like to hear it. <clears throat> so this is a precious word. When John wrote this down <clears throat> at his particular time, this was like the end of an era. He was the last of the apostles and one of the last living that had seen the resurrected Christ. He and we know Paul also and Peter spoke of already way back here in time they had already begun to see false doctrine creeping into the churches and heresies and and all manner of sin in the churches. This had already begun way back there. <clears throat> but heavens opened for John and one of the wonderful things that he hears is this repeating of something Isaiah said hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Babylon has fallen, <clears throat> is suddenly fallen and destroyed. Jeremiah also said this, Jeremiah 51.8, Jeremiah 51.47, Therefore, behold, the days come that I will do judgment upon the graven images of Babylon, and her whole land shall be confounded, and all her slain shall fall. And verse 49, So at Babylon shall fall the slain of all the earth. So, this is a word that's embraced by faith, mm -hmm. and it's, a, it's an old word that's right. that Babylon is going to fall. <clears throat> I don't doubt that this was a great solace to John to hear these things. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Now the word here is fallen, not Babylon is overtaken, or not that Babylon succumbed to a devastating disease that was going through the land. This is our, partic our particular word here, fallen indicates a failure a lack of success, lack of strength to stand, lack of ability to endure, vanity, futility. She's fallen. <clears throat> it could not endure to the end. It did not have a sure foundation. It was not as mighty as it appeared to be. For many centuries now, Babylon has been one of the devil's works in progress, being built higher and higher, growing in influence and apparently in strength. And then suddenly one day, in one hour, right. it falls. <clears throat> there won't be any siege. There won't be any battering rams. There won't be any battle or negotiations. Suddenly, in just one hour, Babylon the Great will fall. <clears throat> because it was set up to fall. <clears throat> that was actually God's design for it all along. And he declared this from the beginning. Now you might ask, doesn't scripture say that Babylon is the product of Satan? We read this uh, <clears throat> some time ago. That she came from and is empowered by the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit. Revelation chapter 17, verses 7 and 8. Yes, this is true, but this is not the entire picture. <clears throat> where did the bottomless pit come from? And where did the beast come from? Isn't Satan one of God's creatures? Ultimately, everything that God has created <clears throat> is serving his purpose. John's vision in the Revelation has the perspective that the beast gave birth to Babylon, to the great whore, and that she has in her hand a golden cup. This is Revelation 17, 4. The woman was arrayed in a purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Now, those who do business with her drink out of this cup. That's what the cup is for. <clears throat> but now Jeremiah presents a higher perspective in addition to this. Jeremiah 51.7, Babylon hath been a golden cup in the Lord's hand Amen. that made all the earth drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine, therefore the nations are mad. Now both these perspectives are true. 
Babylon has a cup of abominations that she offers to you to drink of, but she herself is also a cup in the hand of the Lord. She is fulfilling his purpose. Therefore, when the Lord says Babylon the great is fallen, we can be confident that it will fall because it is in his hand in the first place. Amen. So don't let your heart bleed for too long for those who will not come out of Babylon. She is a golden cup in the hand of the Lord. Babylon exists to take captive people who do not really want Jesus. She is a cup in the Lord's hand that the nations who hate him will drink of, and he will be just in his judgment of them. And we see Babylon as being a cup in the Lord's hand, and this is confirmed to our hearts again that her falling is a sure thing. <clears throat> now the angel declares in, in our text, Revelation 18, verse 2, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. <clears throat> Isaiah spoke of the desolation of Babylon after her judgment also, chapter 13, verse 19, and Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees' excellency, shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. It shall never be inhabited. Neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation. Neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there. Neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. But wild beasts of the desert shall lie there. And their houses, that is the Babylonian houses that are now vacant, will be full of doleful creatures. And the owls shall dwell there. And satyrs shall dance there. And the wild beasts of the islands shall cry out in their desolate houses. And dragons in their pleasant places. And her time is near to come, and her days shall not be prolonged. <clears throat> and we know also from Jesus' words in Matthew 12 and Luke 11 that unclean spirits look for persons to dwell in. <clears throat> they're not content to dwell alone in desolate places, but here that's what they're doing. <clears throat> the legion that Jesus cast out of the Gadarene man would rather dwell in the, in the bodies of swine than be dispossessed of a body. <clears throat> So Babylon is a collecting place for all things evil. It was used as a snare for the nations. And when the prey, that is those who are unfaithful, the hypocrites and etc. were captured there in Babylon, devils and evil spirits and every unclean bird were attracted there because of the prey they sensed. It's like when predators in a jungle or a forest, whatever, they, when they sense that some prey has been injured, or per trapped or something of this nature, they hear its cries or they smell its blood and, and the predators from all around gather to that prey to, to ravage it. <clears throat> so Babylon <clears throat> is a collecting place for these things. Spiritual Babylon is the gathering place for devils and evil spirits because they know they can do their work there unhindered. In the spiritual realms, the scent of prey rises up from Babylon. The scent of the unfaithful, the simple, the hypocrite, those who are easily deceived, attract devils and evil spirits there. It didn't take long before Babylon was known in spiritual realms as the place for every unclean and hateful bird to dwell. These are birds that feed on carrion. They survive on death and they delight in it. And Babylon, spiritual Babylon is full of it. Now, how did this happen? From another perspective, this is the condition of her not being healed. <clears throat> life was living in Babylon, and life was offered to Babylon. We would have healed her so that God would have spared her, but she would not be healed, and God will not spare her. And now the picture given of her end is that all these devils and foul spirits, unclean and hateful birds, dwell in the desolate place that used to be that great city Babylon because they have nowhere else to go now because the light has been shed. <clears throat> Notice the key words here that it's a hold and a cage. See, there, there's no one there for them to feed on anymore. <clears throat> the place has become uninhabitable. Everyone who was involved with her, the kings and the ship's masters and merchants are all standing far off they aren't going to live there. Babylon has vomited up all that she swallowed, and the devils 
and foul spirits are caged up there alone. Babylon is fallen, and the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. <clears throat> One of the reasons the declaration of this angel sounds so good to us is because we are jealous for the name of our God. Before the Lord comes again and closes up this present project, he is going to set the record straight in the earth. He's not going to let this go the way it is. <clears throat> this present perversion, corruption, weakness, and faithlessness that is passing for Christianity is a reproach to his name, and it is going to be judged publicly in the earth by God. Babylon is going to fall, and the line between the people of God and the people of the devil is going to be made very plain and distinct, and we look forward to it. <clears throat> At the noise of the taking of Babylon, the earth is moved, and the cry is heard among the nations. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, the daughter of Babylon is like a threshing floor. It is time to thresh her. Yet a little while, and the time of her harvest shall come. Amen. Amen.